So when we apply for MBA programs, we always thought these are going to be the best two years of our lives. Everything is going to be awesome. It's going to be so much fun. And no one really talk about why you might cry uh, during your MBA program. It happened multiple times to me. And today I'm going to talk about three stories where I cried during my MBA. And hopefully that can give you a more holistic pictures of these two years. If you appreciate what I'm talking about here and like to hear these authentic stories and want to hear more, like and subscribe. It will be tremendously helpful for me. Thank you. So the first time that I cried happened just in two weeks after MBA program started and it happened in a classroom. So the class was called Leadership Lab. So the goal of the class is to create a safe space for students to experiment with different leadership styles. You can be a confrontational leader, or you can be a collaborative leader, or a compassionate leader, authoritative leaders, whichever you wanted to experiment and see how people react to it. In my leadership lab circle, we have a group of six students. Four were um, American and two were international students. And after the second class, one of our classmates proposed that why not give it a more quantitative view? So let's come up with a survey so that we can score each other's leadership styles uh, on a scale of zero to five. And then we're also going to provide some constructive feedback to each other so you can better improve is the effectiveness of your leadership. So I think that's going to be a great idea. So I went back and fill in the surveys for each of my circle mates. And uh, when the results came back, it was extremely frustrating for me to read some of those. So first of all, I got either two or three out of five for all of the questions. And the questions were like, how confident are you in following this person's leadership? How effective do you think that person communicates? How effective do you think that person can lead a team? Stuff like that. So, so the score is pretty low when I first saw it, especially after I've worked for five years at this point and have always led a team in my previous job very effectively. So I was very sad when I saw those results. So I almost cried in my dorm room. So after I was trying to calm myself down for a little while, I talked to the class facilitator and another international student in my circle. And it turns out that she got very similar feedback despite being a very effective leader in her previous role. So I talked to my course facilitator. He told me that it probably is because of the cultural difference between Asia and America. Looking back, this doesn't sound like a big deal at all. It's indeed a safe space, but it was really hard for me in a moment because I just got to a new country with no friends and family. The first feedback that you got was that you are a terrible leader, that no one wants to follow you. So after 27 years working and studying in the Asian cultures, I'm very used to a more polite and less assertive cultures. Whereas when I got here, things changed. You're supposed to express your opinions. You focus so much on communications and influencing. So this is like a totally new challenge for me. And I didn't, I wasn't prepared for that. So however, this class was indeed very valuable for me uh, for the rest of my MBA program because I was able to get a holistic understanding of my leadership style, especially from American lens, so that I can focus my energy in the next two years to learn the right skills from a communication perspective, leadership perspective, to be more effective in the American workforce. The second time I cry was different from the first one. It was happy tears. I was cry because I was so touched by a story told by uh, a classmate of mine, Sophia Shramko. So Stanford GSB has this tradition where students is going to come to the stage and share their life stories with the rest of the class, which is 400 people. And this tradition is called TOG. I immediately fell in love with TOG when I um, went to listen to the first story, which was given by Sophia. Born in a nomadic Arab family, Sophia was raised along with eight siblings by a single mom who escaped an oppressive marriage. When she was 14 years old, she was discovered by a fashion photographer. So she became a model and ultimately she represented the face of the diesel brand in Israel. And later she decided to leave modeling because that wasn't aligned with her value and she wanted to pursue engineering in college. When she was 16 years old, 
she had to move to a city near Tel Aviv and live by herself because she, her mom wasn't able to move with her. She had to wake up at 5 a.m. every single day to clean houses before going to school at 10 a.m. I cried when she told us that one day she was cleaning toilet in her house and she thought that I can only rise from here. Later she enrolled in a student soldier program and wanted to join the R&D department of the Israel Defense Force, also known for IDF. Later she told us that she was so clear about her goal and she was working really really hard towards it, but everybody else around her told her that it's impossible. There is no woman Arab who can join the R&D department in IDF. My heart sank. I was protesting silently with her. Luckily, she worked her way up the command chain and finally became the first Arab woman in the R&D department in IDF and I was so happy. I was probably more proud than herself. But the happy time was always short. She was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis a year later, so she has to leave the program. She has to take care of her health um, and the multiple sclerosis is a very tough disease. Um, it's very depressing because she might have to live with disability one day. I just couldn't believe this tragic incident just happened to this beautiful, strong woman with a lot of dreams that she wanted to make it happen. When I was 19, I woke up one morning with no feeling in the right half of my body. I just lost sensation in that part, as if a very thick layer of plastic was covering my skin. It was such an inspiring story for me and I felt that my life horizon was broadened because I was there crying and listening to this very heartbreaking but inspiring story. The third time I cried was because of job search. I was totally unprepared for how competitive job search is during the MBA time. I wanted to become a product manager. I'm very clear and very sure about this goal. So I was totally unprepared for how competitive this process is and how much effort I need to put into it. So after applying for a lot of companies, I was just literally waiting for a week, two weeks, and more and more time passed. I haven't heard back from 90% of the company I applied for. So I realized that I was so naive. So I start panicking. And after I panic and apply for more companies, I become more stressed out defeated and burn out very quickly. After six months of hard work and trying over and over again and keep getting the feedback, like we don't sponsor international students, you don't have relevant experience, we're looking for someone with technical degree, we're looking for someone who have one to two years of product management experience versus someone like you who came from finance, which has nothing to do with tech or um, product management. I was so sad and I burst into tears. I still remember I was lying on the bed. I called my mom, I was crying and I was telling her how hard everything is. So in the seven months, I finally got a summer internship and an IDEO for a business design internship. I was so happy. So I vividly remember I signed the offer. I sent it over via email and I felt so relieved because I know I can finally take a break. And then the most dramatic thing happened to me the next day, I got a phone call in the morning from a director of product in a startup that I interviewed a month ago. He was very excited. He told me that, congratulations, I wanna give you a product management internship for the summer. I was like, what? This is like the last thing that could have happened to me. This is a super technical role. It's about cloud data backup i have no experience in it i feel miserably in the interview for sure because i know that and then i haven't heard back from you for a month and what's more i just signed an internship and i'm not able to take another one so i was literally crying and i could have waited for one day one more day and then i will have this product management internship that i've worked towards for six months finally i decided not to renew the offer so that I can protect the relationship between the schools and the company. And also IDEO is not a bad company. It was a tremendously helpful experience for me to gain a design experience and I met so many great friends later on. So these are my MBA stories. These are true stories where I cried. Um, some were happy tears, some were sad tears. But thankfully, um, 
looking back after five years, I'm still very, very grateful for the leadership lab course I was part of, which makes me not only a better business leader in the workforce, but also a leadership coach to help other people become better leaders for themselves. And there are also some good news for Sophia. She had had her first baby and she's now working as an amazing course facilitator and executive coach at a Stanford LEAD program. Even though I didn't get the product management internship I wanted uh, during my MBA time, I uh, did get another four week short internship at a Chinese startup uh, in that summer immediately after the ideal internship. And after another years of hard work, now I'm doing a fan PM job that I really love uh, and I'm building great products day in and day out. So these are my MBA stories, which are not the happiest moment but actually the most rewarding and valuable lessons that can benefit me for a much longer time. See you next time.